All right, now we're going to do problem 13. So we're going a little bit out of order, but whatever. So here's the problem that we're given. And so we are going to start with part A. So let's see here. First, we check that M is absolutely continuous with respect to mu. This is true because if mu of e equals zero, what does that mean? Then e must be the empty set because on the counting measure, any non-empty set contains some element and so it's gonna have positive measure. Um, and so m of e equals zero because measure of the empty set is zero, always. So now to prove dm is not equal to f d mu for any f, what does this mean? We want to show that there does not exist an f such that for all e in script m, the measure of the Lebesgue measure of e is equal to the integral over e of f in gray with respect to the counting measure. Um, now, here this notation might annoy you a bit because I didn't say there does not exist an f such that for all blah blah blah, but I think technically the eps, the um, existence uh, sign implies that there is a such that um, after whatever, like, um, there exists f literally means there is an f such that. Um, and it's not really a big point, um, but that's just like if that's bothering you, that's why I do it. Um, and it's just a convention that I use. So let f be any function. Um, of course, this is like going to be a function where we want it to be um, on 0 to 1, but we won't really um, worry about it too much because it really doesn't matter. So first, if there is some x in the closed interval from 0 to 1 such that f of x is non-zero, then what does this tell us? Then the integral over just the set containing x of f d mu what is this equal to? This is just f of x times the mu measure of x. And uh, x contains one point, so the counting measure evaluated at that set evaluates to one. So this is just f of x. And the Lebesgue measure of the singleton point x is just zero. So dm is not equal to f d mu in this case. If f is identically equal to zero, then what? Then the integral f over the entire um, interval from zero to one of f d mu is equal to zero, but um, the Lebesgue measure of this interval is just one. So again, dm is not equal to f d mu, and hence dm can never be f d mu because, I mean, f is either going to be identically zero or it's going to be um, not zero somewhere, and in both cases we know that this equality does not hold. All right, so that takes care of part A, and now let's move on to part B. So mu has no Lebesgue decomposition with respect to mu. Um, what does this mean exactly? I claim um, that there do not exist A and B, um, we'll say positive measures, um, positive measures on 
them such that mu is equal to a plus b, alpha, alpha plus beta, alpha is absolutely continuous with respect to m, and beta is um, mutually singular with respect to m. Um, so suppose it is the case that alpha b are alpha beta are measures and um, mu equals a plus b and alpha is mutually singular with or absolutely continuous with respect to the Lebesgue measure. Then what does this imply? Then for all x in our interval, alpha evaluate at the point x plus beta evaluate at the point x, well, this is just by definition mu of x, or by choice rather. Um, and what is this? This is a counting measure, so that's one. Now, alpha is, abs is uh, absolutely continuous with respect to m, um, and uh, the, me the Lebesgue measure of a singleton point equals zero, so beta x equals mu x equals one. This holds for all x in interval from zero to one. Hence, in fact, beta equals mu, but beta then lives on all subsets of, uh, all, not all non-empty subsets, but whatever, all subsets of 0, 1. So it cannot be the case that beta is mutually singular with respect to m. Thus, mu cannot have a Lebesgue, Lebesgue decomp with respect to m. Because we know that if we satisfy some of the properties for it, then that um, guarantees that the last property won't hold. And why does this not contradict the, um, any of the stuff that we've done previously in this chapter. Well, all of the, like, the Radon-Nicodeme theorem and, like, Lebesgue decomposition, all of this stuff applies on sigma-finite measure spaces. And the counting measure is not sigma-finite on the interval from 0 to 1. And that's because you, you can't, um, uh, the, the counting measure it can only be finite on finite sets and you can't have like a countable union of finite sets being the entire interval from 0 to 1 therefore you cannot write 0 to 1 as a countable union of sets all of whose measure with respect to the counting measure is 0 and so this kind of shows you why or kind of justifies why we really need sigma finiteness in our assumptions on those theorems so yeah, I guess that me means that this problem gives us a little more insight um, into the theorems of this chapter. But anyways, we are done.